Hope you enjoyed the a little bit more seamless transition into a tutorial. I hope that worked anyways. Let me check. I think I've got audio. Seems like it's coming in. I hope you can hear me. Uh, as I said, a uh, little impromptu of a stream today. I have a character that I thought would be interesting to share, a little rig I'm making. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more of a complex rig, so I'm still setting up the character in Illustrator a little bit. I'm a little behind. Uh, I wanted to be a little bit farther ahead before I started the stream, but I also didn't want to start the stream late, and you know what? It's always good to see what I'm doing at the same time. The more you see, the more you learn. Uh, a couple other things before I start. Uh, I've ordered a mic, so hopefully that will be coming next week. I, sh I don't think I'll have it by Monday's stream, but the following Monday I should have a mic and the audio should be slightly better because right now I'm just rolling off my uh, laptop uh, inner, inner mic and my laptop's kind of loud and this room I'm in has high ceilings, decent acoustics, but you know, it's just not the best when you're in a large room and you're recording with a shitty laptop mic. So that's something to look forward to as I continue to try to up my game here and make this more enjoyable for you guys to watch. Anywho, we are just going to get right into it. Uh, right now, like I said, I'm just setting up this character. This is my character here. Uh, a surgeon type guy. And right now I'm just making mouths. He might need to talk in the animation, so I'm making a series of uh, mouth shapes in case I need to cycle through talking. So right now I've got the closed mouth. And now I'm making... And Closed mouth, that's uh, typically, uh, as I write here, the sound for M, B, and P. So, M, B, P sounds. That's the mouth, you'll, that's the mouth shape you'll look for. Uh, the next shape I usually do is the AH sound, A's and AHs and all that good stuff. Um, for that shape, you want the mouth open, sort of like this. And you also want to be showing a little bit of teeth at the top. Oops, 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 oops. Like so. Oh, so we do that mouth. Ah. Then I usually actually now I usually copy that new layer and do it. Eh sound. And for this, mouth tends to be a little bit straighter. back plate there. So we keep the top teeth for eh, but we also uh, want to add some bottom teeth. Slightly showing here.
We get a little too much. Yeah. Take that outline. The other thing to note, when you're starting off with your uh, mouths, and you've got essentially just your closed mouth, if you think about a mouth when you talk, it's only your jaw that's moving. It's not, so, I, so never take this line, this baseline, this MVP line, that's the top of your mouth. You don't ever want to raise that up. Unless you're doing an O sound, then it will you'll get a slight circle here. But other than that, everything goes down from that. Your jaw is opening. Hope that makes sense. Uh, next thing we do is go back to our A sound. Copy that again. And we're going to make our consonants sound. This is basically any sort of T or CH, CH sounds, T sounds, ch, 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 anything where your mouth is sort of closed. This is honestly, next to MVP, this is probably the one that's used the most. things going on here I don't like. I have strokes on things I don't need them on. Okay. So we got that. And that can also double as, you know, a smile. Call that mouth cons for consonants. Next, I'll usually do O sound, right? Yeah, that's nice. So I'll look at my mouth, you know, just sort of do a O there. This also is, it's O and W, so O, W. So if you're going, what, what, or ooh, then you use that. Anywhere there's an O in a word, that's what you want to call it. Next, we've got... We'll do we'll do T or L like the L sound I mean like L L L L L L for that you need a little tongue action. Bring his teeth down a little bit. Character's kind of simple in colors, so I haven't had to haven't had to really had to make a flesh color. I guess I'll just make it a slightly darker gray. Yeah, that works. La 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 la. I'll also usually 
something like this. To mouth L. So let's. We had to say let's. You go from L. If you had to say the word let, let's like let's play. You do. You start with the L, and you go to this let, and then you go to your consonants. That's how you'd say let's. All right, and I usually only do one more mouth. I mean, you can get really crazy with your mouth shapes. Uh, but I usually just do one more and doesn't copy our ah uh again. Go here. It's the the V sound, V or F for fight or um, van. And the way you do that is you ungroup and just make like a series of these lines. Like he's going, fuck! Come on, come on. Get a little more teeth, Sean. I think that's good enough. There's not really any voiceover in this. I'm just doing it just in case I want to make him look like he's talking. Um, he's not really talking in the script. I'm gonna go through and group all this. I'll make sure everything is grouped. We're gonna be importing things with Overlord again. I just had to go through and check that everything has a groove. People don't root. That's oh. sad. Legs aren't grouped. I've only got one set of hands right now, uh, but I can always add more later if I need them. Okay. I think everything has a group. We'll save, save, I think everything, I think I have every piece that I want. Yep, we'll call that good. So we'll go into After Effects. Look at this, I even made a workspace just for streaming, just so I don't have to dick around and move my panels anymore. Boom, now everything you guys need to see is there. Open my project. It's missing. Okay. 
Ah, crap. I gotta do it again. Workspace. Twitch stream. Boogity wham wham wuzzle. Okie dokie. I'm gonna make a new folder. So I like to be as organized as possible. Even if you're working fast, even if you're on a tight de deadline, which this is, organization is your friend. There's always time for organization, I kid you not. Because when you start working fast and you don't label things and you go down that rabbit hole, something is eventually going to go wrong. Something will eventually need to be changed. And it's you're just making more work for yourself later down the road. A colleague of mine says, preload the, preload the pain, or preload the, I think it was preload the pain, which essentially just means, you know, put in the work early on, because it'll make the end easier, and that's what you want. Got our character folder. Got our character. Composition. Oops, no, we're not doing it this way. We are using Overlord, I forgot. This comp is... Make it even numbers. Let's see, this is... Six hundred by... I forget, I'm so used to not using Overlord. I'm trying to like get it into my workflow though, because I do think it's worth it. Save. After Effects. We will make a new comp. the length. Got our new comp, we're going to call it J base. This is going to be our character J. And what was it? 2600 by what was it? 4200. My background would just be like a real flat gray. Because everything usually looks decent on flat gray. Alright. Save. And now we're going to import old J here. Push selection to AE. Pray to God everything goes in right. Make sure I don't have any duplicates. I don't. We are looking good. Alright. Save. And here, now the fun part begins. I'm doing things a little bit different. I'm not using Duick. I'm going to use Rubber Hose this time. And I'm also going to use Joysticks and Sliders for the Base rig. So I'm just. I just want to think for a second. First, we're going to pre comp things like the mouths. I'm going to take the mouth shapes and we're going to pre compose those. I apologize. Most of my stuff just keeps popping up on the left screen. So I have to drag it over here, recompose it into a new comp called Mouth. We're going to go into Mouth. We're going to make this comp size the size of the actual mouths. Let's 
It's easier to work with. And we have seven mouths, seven mouth shapes. So we are going to Apple K to bring up our comp settings. And we're going to make this seven frames long. Then we're going to option right bracket. That makes, that takes our, our cuts our mouth shapes down to one frame. We're going to just uh, put each mouth on a different frame. Burp, burp, boop, 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 all one frame long. Blip. Okay. Now, we're going to go back into JBase. And we are going to go to our mouth. Well, first, we have to reposition our mouth shape because it moves. And we are going to Apple T. Oops. Command Option T. And that uh, time remaps the layer, our, our pre comp. We're going to get rid of this. We're going to put a hold keyframe on uh, the mouth. Now, if we, now we can go through and select which mouth we want, put a keyframe on it. Uh, I might use joysticks and sliders to make this a little bit easier later, but for now, that's good. Let's see here. Next thing. Blink. We only want the blink to show up. Um, if we want the blink's opacity to be opposite the eye's opacity. And I apologize, I, sh I use this expression all the time, but I'm going to have to look up the expression. Because I always just forget it. It's basically an opposite opacity expression. So when the opacity on We're going to put it on our blink layer. So we're going to open our blink layer's opacity. Uh, option click stopwatch. And we're going to paste our expression. This is the expression. However, we have to change this, this section to match the layer name of the other layer, to match the layer name of the layer that we want this blink to be, this blink's opacity to be opposite of, which is going to be eyes. I'm going to write eyes. And just like that, the blink is gone. And I'll show you how it works. So now we can close blink, we can lock it. It's parented to, it's gonna be parented to head. Actually, it's gonna be parented to eyes. So now we can lock it, hide it. It's gone forever. We never need to see blink again. Um, let me get my pupils because we're going to option click the stopwatch of the opacity of the pupils and we're going to pick with that to the opacity of the eyes because if the eyes are closed you won't see the pupils so those opacities just have to match now we're going to put a hold keyframe on the opacity for eyes And as you see, if I put zero here, boom, he blinks. Just like that, we have blinks. Boop, boop, boop. Ain't that cool? You know it's cool. 
Right. I'm gonna lock the shadow because that doesn't matter at all right now. I'm just trying to do things piece by piece so they make the most sense to you guys and to me. I don't want to... You're kind of watching me figure it out as I go this time. I don't really have this as planned out as I normally do. And I also don't work with rubber hose as much as Duick, so sometimes I have to fiddle around a little bit. And same with uh, joysticks and sliders. I've only used... I've used it on a couple different head rigs, but I usually have to fiddle around with it a little bit to get things to work. But... For now, let's do our arms and legs next because those are going to be done with rubber hose and we are actually going to use rubber pin. So I've got this arm, solo it, I'm going to put three pins in it. The cool thing about this is I don't even think you have to name the I better not have broke. God damn it. Alright, first miss first uh thing. First issue. So my pins are breaking this shape. So I guess they aren't connected enough. Bring this down like this. And then we'll be fine. Okay. So, my sleeve was just a little bit too seamless, so the pin broke it, but just pulled the sleeve down a little bit. And that's, the, that's kind of the joy of Overlord is that since everything shapes it's very easy to just you know adjust things in in the moment so we'll solo the left arm command p for a puppet pin and we'll put three pins one at the shoulder one at the forearm and one at the wrist now I think you just hit the hit the lower pin, right? Upper pinning the shape is a bad idea. Add pins to a free comp. Damn it! Alright. <laughs> learning learning things as we go. Isn't it nice when the plugins tell you what you're doing wrong? Alright, we have to pre-compose this. We're going to pre-compose. I'm just going to call it L arm again. We're going to make it light pink because I like everything to look the same color. Light fuchsia. I'm going to go in here. Do this again. Going to change my comp size. Crap out. Right, now we're going to solo this guy again. Okay, we're going to solo him. Shoulder. Forearm. I'm going to be precise about this. Wrist. Okay. Now, hold on, move these keyframes to the beginning. I'm going to be working at the beginning. Now let's see if it'll work. Select three puppet pins. All right. W, select my keyframes. And we work. Boom. We have lift off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna drop this down to third. 
the things just run more smoothly. Let's see if half does it. We'll go half for now. As I continue to build this rig, it'll probably continue to get a little bit slower. So, but uh, we'll get the arm back to its first position. Unsolo everything. Okay, now we're going to take our hand. Now that we've got our rig set up. We take our hand, move our anchor point. We want that anchor point to be right, right over that controller, or as close as possible. And we are going to. Then we're going to take the hand. We're going to parent it to the wrist controller. Then, we're going to lock our hand for now. Actually, we're not going to lock the hand. We're just going to move it down under the rig. That was weird. So now when we move our wrist controller, the hand goes with it. And right now, you see how we have auto-rotate the end clicked on? That's what's making... If you want the hand to just auto-rotate, I mean, more power to you. That's fine. You can still rotate the hand freely if you want. I think we'll keep it on for now. Because I kind of like that it does it for you. The other thing I want to do, first off, I need to make this comp size wider. So that his arm can do a full extend. Save. I'm going to add a Auto flop. So now, I, that's a, that's one of the coolest features about the old rubber hose, is that auto-flop auto, auto flop feature. You can see my hand's getting a little bit disconnected, but it's not too bad. So when my arm, auto-flop, for those that don't know, see this blue line that was created? Um, whenever my arm passes, whenever my wrist passes that line, the arm auto flops to the opposite direction, which is just really useful. Cool. All right, we are working slowly. You can make the auto flop and then move it. Uh -huh. I think I want that up there. Okay, that's cool. Sh -sh 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 shoulder. Does the auto flop move with the shoulder? That is so cool. I actually want the shoulders to be sort of hidden in the body here.
Oh, is that too much? Let me give him like a little bit of a, yeah. a big uh that's not that's not too shabby. Save, save often, so I don't know what I'm doing. I also want to hide things. Hand is fine, but we're gonna lock it. Arm, we can lock and hide at this point. If it'll rotate on the hand, we may rotate at some point. Oh, you move that if you just want to move everything. That's cool. Close center. I think we need this. Sweet. I'm gonna hide that. Auto flop is set up. So I'm gonna hide it. Shoulder. I want a parent to the torso. Is that gonna mess anything up? Nope. That's what we want. That, that's what we want. Yeah, that's what we want. Building a rig piece by piece, step by step. The other thing about this character is like the legs aren't super important. I'm gonna add rubber hose to him, but he's I don't, I'm not making him walk. Um, I specifically storyboarded and designed him to just be facing front the whole time. He's gonna need to move his arms and his head, but uh, his legs maybe bend, but they don't really need to do much else than that. The scene is going to kind of animate around him in different and cool ways. Um, he's just going to kind of be the center. But anyways, turn everything back on hide. Shoulder at this point, I think we can hide. Really, L arm transform. I don't think we need unless we need it. So I'm going to hide that too. I'm going to need the wrist. In the hand. Alright, let's do the other arm. So we'll go a little bit faster because we know what we're doing. Gotta pre compose it. Gotta go into our. Oh. We also have to bring the sleeve down a little bit. No, drop it. Save. Let's make sure it lines up with this one. Put our puppet pins on there. Get a little closer so I can be a little bit more precise. Okay, we got our puppet pins. Got to select them. And we do it again. Hopefully nothing breaks. Look at that kids, nothing broke. We're also going to put our auto flop on. Going to rotate that.
going to make sure it's working properly is things are bending the right way and take our hand change the anchor point line it up parent the hand to the wrists control that looks dandy Ooh, that one blue this one's orange oh wait it's because it's this one is like that means it's overstretched right yeah that's fine we don't care. Okay, now we're going to take our, our transform. Oops, we're going to lock and hide this auto flop. Suppose. Got our arm moved. Lock that. Hide it. Center. Locked. Hide. Shoulder. Need to reparent this to the torse. It's short for torso. It's just short for torso. Make sure things are working. This is beautiful. Beautiful. It almost looks like I know what I'm doing. Anyone can do this. If I can do this, you can do this. It's really just following a series of steps and not being afraid to make mistakes. That's what save and undo is for. Okay, we're going to lock and hide the shoulder. Don't need to see it. Put a rotate on the hand. In case we need it, lock that. And boom. Just like that. Arms are ready to go. Save, 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 save. All right, we're going to do the same thing with the legs. And I apologize if this is overly time consuming, but I'll, I'll do these ones fast. I won't explain as much. Because you should get it at this. You should have an idea of what I'm doing at this point. We're going to do two at a time. We're going to speed through this. Step by step, day by day. Mm -hmm.
going through the exact same steps periodically checking the things are doing what we want them to do if that leg wasn't bending the right way switch it over go back to half we'll kick it down to third Transformer Center for either of these, they're already synced up. L foot. Hips, repaint those to the old pel. Look at that pelvis. Where you be? No. Here's my pelvis. Now if I move my pelvis, look at that. Sweet. Always good to make a fart sound. Let's get things a little bit more parented up. This mask is going to be on Z. Torso. I'm going to lie, I got my torso so far down. Let's move it. The torso should at least be over the pelvis. Torso on the pelvis. Get our. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. That's good. For now. Keep checking things. That little foot auto rotates. I love that. I don't think we need to do any switching. Your leg wouldn't automatically all of a sudden bend the other direction. Uh, we're going to hide the hips. Lock and hide them. Honestly, feet we're gonna hide because I don't think I'm gonna want to randomly. I don't know. If later on I need to call them up, I will, but I don't think it's gonna come up. You can also rename these two, which is probably smart. Cannoli. The rename is, I was naming, I think I'm naming things too similar to each other. It usually breaks things I should know better. Oh, let's go. Sorry, this is off screen too. Let's go L. I probably should have renamed things earlier and not been naming things so similar, but it's not a big deal. You live and you learn, and then you get loves. All right, we can also hide the legs. Don't need those. We have to hide this arm. Don't need that. I'm still working. That is cool. All right, the next thing I'm going to, going to do is I'm going to comp all the head stuff into a head comp. So I minimize the amount of layers I have in my master J comp. 
So let's see. Bang, brow, brow, pupils, eyes, nose, eyes. Mouth, hair, head, ear, ear. Recompose, head. Shit, forgot my blink was hidden. Grab that blink. Recompose, head. Save. Go in the head. Do the old. Do the old comp prop. Go back into J base. Move our anchor point. Attach him to the neck. Move these up. So I want my neck above my torso. Neck. Attach the torso. Now he should be pretty much. He's, he's full on uh, together. We can get really wild, I think. We can uh, call do it, bring do it to the, this party. Grab our head, neck, torso, and pelvis, go into auto rig, and do a spine. Head, neck, torso, pelvis, okay. Now we've got, ah oh shit, hold on. Forgot to change my neck anchor point. All right. Now, head, neck, torso, pelvis, spine, Okay. Now we've got uh, controllers for those. I really hate CC pelvis. I never use that. Put that out here. Look at look at how many layers we have now. Look at this. Make our controllers green. Even though some of the shadows kind of pointless. I mean, look at this. And now we we don't need to have the pelvis out, the torso, or the neck. Hide all that garbage. I mean, honestly, you don't need the mask. Come on. Okay. I'm just going to do a little pick whip, rotate mass to the torso's rotation. So now, I'm going to add times negative one. So now the mass kind of just dangles there. Which is pretty nifty. Okay. Hide everything again. Now we can lock and hide that mask. Look at this. This is what you want. You don't want a ton of layers that you have to look at to animate. You just want things this is why shit like Duick and Rubber Hose has made this stuff so easy. It's like you just want to be able to grab and animate one thing. Maybe you've been some calisthenics. This is why I have a rotate, so I want. 
his hand to be able to I'm going to increase these hose lengths too because it just makes his arm look a little short. Let's go up to 1300 on both. He's kind of a tall, lanky looking character. Zero that back up. Now this, this auto rotate, I think I'm gonna click it off. I don't like the, I don't like it. I like to have control of like the rotation of the hands. Auto rotates nice if like uh, if you're doing something else, but I like to have control of that for this character. Okay, we have a basic rig now. That's pretty cool. Now we're gonna get so we've done all the rubber hose and do it stuff. Now we are going to get into the joysticks and sliders. And this thing is like my new favorite. So we're going to dive into the head. And the first thing we're going to do is make our character be able to look around. How, you might ask. Well, I will show you. And then first off, First off, I need to make sure this hair is masked by the head. I'm also going to pull Pull it out a little bit so I have more to work with. We'll see why in a moment. That's good. First things first, we're going to add position and rotation to all this junk. Might get a little wacky here because I have to extend a lot, but it will be worth it. I promise. Okay. So the way joysticks and sliders work is essentially you you make five keyframes. And I'm going to reference Yes, you make five keyframes. Front right, left, up, and down extremes. So that's what I'm going to do. So right now we've already got our front. Our character is looking towards the front. Next one up is right. So let's make the character look right. First we're going to parent our pupils though to our eyes. So. Boink. Hide this ear a little bit, bring this ear out a little bit. Move our mouth over. Ah, oh, shoot. 
First we're going to move forward one keyframe, and then we're going to look right. That means everything. Looks a little weird with his nose, but he's kind of a styled character. That's why, and that, see, that's why I added that extra on the hair so I could move this right one. I don't think we're gonna. I'm, I don't think I'm gonna mess with rotation on this guy. I don't think it's worth it. I'm just gonna do positions. And head, I actually didn't need to do it. So right, move forward a keyframe. Cool thing is you can click this origin button and it brings all everything back to the origin state. So you can work off the origin. I'm going to bring this up a little bit. Except pupils I didn't need either. Pupils is gonna be a separate thing. And I will show you that in a bit. And you can do this. I want these glasses to be off this coming off his face a little bit. I guess, and I was gonna say, you can do this with literally any of the, like position, scale, rotation. So you can play around in a lot of different ways. But right now, for what art we need, this character, just need position. Check and make sure you got a keyframe on everything. Okay. Select all. Origin. Hit that origin button. Now, up. Get to our up extreme. think here I'm doing something wrong I don't want to do the browse right now you'll see why in a moment I will keep it a secret for now I'm actually I gotta pre comp each of these brows. Oh, let's call it L brow comp. Um, I apologize for jumping around on you, but. 
essentially setting up this joystick slider, I don't want my brows to be a part of it in that way because in the way I was just doing it because if I do it that way I won't have any individual controls over the brows and if you know anything about character animation and faces a lot of emotion comes from your brows so we had to pre-comp and we're going to go into our pre-comp And this time we are we are not even going to uh, rechange. We're not even going to crop the comp. I don't think it's worth it. But I'm going to show you a similar sort of uh, way to use joysticks and sliders. Only this time it's going to be a slider. The way slider differs from joysticks is that sliders, you can uh, basically create a slider control that toggles through I mean, two keyframes. It can be more than two, but you need at least two. And for this, we're only going to use two. So we're going to do the extremes. So the extreme would be position down, really mad. It's too far. Keep going back to our head to double check. That looks good. And then our other extreme, which you can just go a, a frame forward, rotate up, and raise it way up. Hard to see because the head's turning. I think that's good. So we've got our two extremes there up and down. I'm actually going to copy this position. Here. Move it over. Sorry, my neighbor is vacuuming upstairs if you can hear that. It happens. Gonna get that mic next week, and I should have pretty decent audio of just my voice. Of course, why wouldn't she be vacuuming today? At 11.30 on a Thursday. Getting our extremes. God, she is like right above me, just going at that rug. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but damn, she is full force on that thing. All right, we have our extremes. Now, select our keyframes. And we hit create new slider null. Give her slider null a unique name. You want to name this damn thing. Trust me. You're going, but you don't want to name it like L Brow. You, it needs, we'll call it L Brow Control. At least name it a little bit different. You also, I've found, you want to go in here name this fucking thing L Brow Control. I don't know why it doesn't change on its own, but it should. If you don't change that, and you pile these up, like we're going to later in a single comp, it, things break. So make, and you gotta do it at the beginning because it's hard to go back. Uh, so yeah, L Brow Control. So now you can see when we change this, isn't that cool? That's cool. All right, gonna do the same thing with the R-brow. Create new slider. 
R brow control. Name that thing R brow control. Alright, things are working. Save. Now, what we need to do, select the control. See this part? Move slider to parent comp. Select head. We want to move it to parent. Boom. Just like that. Now, see how this is red? It won't work anymore. That is because it's moved to the parent. We're going to do it to the L brow too. Head to parent. See? Also, it doesn't work. Both of them are redded out. Close those. Go into your head. At the top of your head, oh, look what we have here, our controls. And look, we can move them. Isn't that cool? Yes, it is. If you're confused as to why that is cool, I don't know why you're watching this. Because that is fucking awesome. Um, all right. Now we did that, and we did that, and now we can actually go into these brows, put a position on these comps, and, and sync them back up with our turns. So now when we do this, we still have control. Isn't that, that is fucking awesome. All right, we'll catch these brows up. Okay, now let's get back to what we were doing, which is uh, making things face up. Let's start, let's start with the brows. Make this guy look up. Thing here is the ears when you're going up, the ears actually go down a little bit, not major, but down just a hair. And so let's move the mouth. Now we have one more position to do, which is down. Get back our origin. Start moving things down. Start with the mouth this time. Glasses. The glasses would like slide down his nose. Eyes. Ears are going to go up a little bit. His brows. They're going to go down. Okay, so we have straight. Left, right, left, up, and down. I don't want his glasses. A little bit higher. Save that. Select all this, all these layers that you affected. And we are going to Click on this magic button. 
And when I say magic, I mean this is going to be magic. Like everything, we name it. We're going to call it head, rotate, control. Now, I know there's a big box in the way, but this, look at this. Is that not magic or what? And the cool thing is, no matter where we're facing, we can still control our expression with our brows. The other cool thing is you can always zero this out and it turns, returns to center. Okay, save. What do we want to do next? What do we want to do next? Sometimes when I do this, it's like my head hurts because I'm trying to keep everything organized and so I don't make any mistakes. All right, next thing we're going to do, let me hide this stuff or not just so it's not in the way. Um, eyes or pupils. We're going to do a mini version of what we just did with the entire head with the pupils. So straight, right, left, up. And I'm gonna have to make a mask for these bad boys. And down. I'm going to make a new shape. And just a full. Let me see what I'm doing. going to be our pupil mask. Save. Parent this pupil mask to the eyes. Alpha mat this some bitch. Now we have a nice mask. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, grab those, new joystick. I rotate control. Just like the head now. See, now we can move the eyes. Separate from the head. We bring our head back. See? We can turn our head right, but look left. Isn't that freaking cool? Yes, it is. It's cool. You know it. Oops. All right. Save. What else do we want to add to this awesome face rig? Let me think. I gotta be able to call up that blink whenever I want to. So... I don't know that I've actually ever done this before. So let's see what happens. Eyes.
it's going to be another slider control. So opacity at 100. I don't know what happens when you do it on old keyframes either. This is an experiment. Opacity at zero. Grab those. Create a new slider. Blank. Control. Remember, rename this. Blank. Control. I don't know why they don't double that up for you. Okay, this, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, stay true to our old keyframes, but regardless, it's still, it's fine. We can turn, the, we can turn hold keyframes back on later, like outside, like this, we can put hold keyframes on this slider. All right, hide that for now. And the only other thing I want to do is to be able to control my mouth. So. To do that, we've got our time remap, correct? Same exact thing when you're thinking of the slider. What are your extremes? And what are we gonna put them on? We're gonna put them on the time remap because that's what's controlling things. So one of our extremes is zero. The other extreme is seven. No, it's six. Yes. And now we make another slider. Mouth, shape, control. Mouth, shape, control. Now when you move this slider, you get the different mouths. Now it took a value of seven or six and stretched it over a hundred. So you kind of have to move the slider a little bit before it changes, but it's still very useful. I'm going to show you how we're going to take this and make it even more useful to us. Because right now, all this stuff, it's still embedded in this head count. That doesn't help us because we're going to be animating everything out, outside here in J base. Yo, J base. So we're going to do the same concept we did earlier with the browse, but with all of our controls. So we're going to take them all and put them all to the parent. We're just going to go through one by one and do that. So mouth, mouth shape control to parent. And bam, there it is. Let's move this. So I don't like these. Move this over here. So we got our mouse shape control. And see? I'll zoom in. Now we can control our mouth shapes in JBase. Very useful. Alright, I'm gonna go through and do them all and I'll show you it. Save. So let's just lock that so we don't ever need it again and hide it. Blink control to parent. There it is again. Just gonna put all these nulls in the same spot for now. Save. Back to the head. Lock, hide. I rotate control. Now you have to select. This is a joystick, not a slider. So you go back into joysticks. And I forget which one of these. You, I think it's the control you have to grab. To J base, two parent. It turned red. That means it worked. See? Now we're in our parent comp. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. Now it's in our parent comp. Isn't that amazing? Okay. Save. Back to the head. 
lock these. Hide them. You don't need them. Okay, head control. Same thing. Two parent. Goes red. It's all good. Hide it. Go to J base. Move this by the head somewhere where it's useful to you. Now we're controlling the head. The cool thing is, oh, let's have him look right and lean right. Yeah. Oh, wait, maybe he wants to, oh, what's over here? Look at that, that's just, I think that is so fun. Yeah. I feel like my stream is so far behind me, but that's okay. Um, what, 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 what now? All right, next is the brows. Let me zero this back out first. Okay. Brow. Go back to sliders. To parent. No brow control. This is the part where if you did not rename these in the in the effect control panel things would start breaking. Trust me, I've been there before. And it is not cool. I just like to move these uh, little nulls into one spot because it puts them in the center of the comp and I don't like that. All right, go back to head, lock and hide. Last one is the right brow. Uh, take that to the parent, lock and hide it, just like that. You've got everything you need in one comp. Now, you thought we were done, but we are not. D Ugh, we are not done. Because sliders, you can take them to another level. You can make a, a UI. So I'll show you. This right brow, let's create a UI for it. Oh, shit. See? Does it not work? Damn it. I was feeling I was feeling myself. What's the error? This this is what happens, man. I don't know why that is. It's saying it for all of them. Fuck you. And this is where shit gets beyond me too. Because... Oh, this is such a bummer. I've done this before too, and it's worked. I just had to fuck around with it a hundred times. Do we have to change that to mouth shape control?
Let me think. I know it's something is like this is where I am not. This is like above me. I know it's something as simple as just something's labeled wrong in this stupid expression. I mean, I'm sure I can't just do. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go back and try to fix it. Maybe adding control under the name is what's fucking it up. I don't think we can change change this at this point. Holy shit, it worked. Is that going to work for all of them? Ah, I probably can't just change this to our brow though. Oh my god, you can. Alright, I'm not... Wow. I'm not totally sure. Hold on, let me do it to the L brow first. I'm like so ready for something else to break. All right, people, don't put control in the fucking effects panel. Let me see here. We're not out of the woods yet in my book. But this is what I was trying to show you, essentially. And also you got to see me panic for a second. Um, you get to make UI sliders. Let's see if they work. Oh my god, they still work. So now, everything you need to control... ...is just out there. You don't have to dive into anything. It's all just right in front of you. Now, it made a lot of layers. We're gonna condense that in a second. Uh, let me get my blink. Let me save. All right. <laughs> blink. I'm going to call it the blinker. It is freaking hilarious, dude. Oops. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to make, we don't want negative slider values on any of these, or at least I don't, because it's kind of pointless, like, look, you can go even farther, like, why would I ever want to do that? We're going to turn all those off on all of them. Make this look a little prettier. Make these a little smaller because they're gigantic right now. Oh, 125. That's like 125. Save. And, uh, now I'm just, honestly, I'm just rearranging things so they're pretty. And they make sense. Actually swap those. 
So they're in relation to the head. Now you can put keyframes on these. I don't need the expedition. And like I said before, we're just gonna these are gonna be our hold keyframes. There's our blank again. Mouse shape, move this guy. Okay. So you can extend the limit of the slider too. Just a couple last things before I call it. If you wanted more space between to work with, or if you wanted less if you wanted it to be personally having more space works a little bit better i'm just going to keep it at 100. now we are going to lock and lock and hide everything we don't need to see Bam. All right. And there you have it. You have everything rigged up, ready to go. And like I said, he's not going to be using his legs all that much, so I could, I could honestly stay in this close and do everything I need to do, be able to grab things. I mean, you can always make things these bigger if you need to be able to grab them from way out here. But uh, I don't think I will. So this is going to be my rig. Move his arm. Do whatever I want, man. Huh. Test, take him for a test run. Squat him down. There you go. That is how you make a rig with rubber hose and joysticks and sliders. I really hope you guys like this. Uh, I'm going to try. This was an impromptu one just because I thought this would be interesting to show and make an interesting tutorial. I am going to be doing this uh, weekly now. Hopefully I can keep coming up with ideas and things to tutorial every once a week but it's going to be mondays at 6 p.m eastern standard time um yeah and this coming up monday we are going to be doing 
just a simple ball bounce. Uh, we're going to take it back to basics a little bit. I know we've been doing a lot of character animation, but I wanted to just take it back to basics a little bit. Uh, and there's nothing more basic in animation than doing a ball bounce, truly. You learn a lot from uh, an exercise like that. And the following Monday, so that's on, going to be on the 6th. On the 13th, I'm going to try to make a little bike riding uh, character rig, someone that rides a bike. And beyond that, I do not know. I don't have anything planned. Uh, but stay tuned and follow me on Twitch, TNT underscore studio, or follow me on Twitter, Chris Kelsch. That's Chris, K-E-L-S-H, K-E-L-S-H. And uh, that's it for now. I really hope you guys <clears throat> join me for more. And yeah, thanks for, thanks for watching. Oh,